what we've shown uh, is that in ma all malignant germ cell tumours, we've identified uh, that two microRNA clusters, uh, that's MER371-3 and MER302 cluster, that are specific clusters at two points uh, within the genome, uh, are found at very high levels in the tumours themselves at, uh, when we uh, look at them and do genetic analysis. What uh, that, the implications of that finding, and that this is one of the first times we have found uh, a common or shared biological abnormality in these tumours, which actually, in the way they present clinically and the way they appear under the microscope, are actually very diverse. Now, uh, what the way that helps us is potentially in diagnosis. And what we've gone on to show is that not only are these levels of microRNAs at very high levels in the tumours, uh, but also at the time of patient diagnosis with these tumours, we've also found in the last year or two that the levels of these microRNAs are very high in uh, patient bloodstream. Uh, at diagnosis, we've also gone on to show in uh, a number of patients that following treatment, the levels of these microRNAs uh, fall uh, and reflect uh, the clinical status of the patient. Uh, now, the n numbers of patients we've looked at in, uh, and published so far have been quite small, but I think it'll be important in the future to look at these uh, microRNAs uh, in the bloodstream and in other body fluids, uh, uh, really in larger numbers, to confirm these initial studies uh, with a view to getting these, uh, these tests into clinical practice. So when we refer to marker positive cases, we're referring obviously to the proteins AFP and HCG that we use in clinical practice. Uh, and uh, what we know is that in marker positive cases, yes, the uh, diagnosis that these levels of MER3713 and MER302 are high. But importantly, there's a significant proportion of patients who are also marker negative uh, with, with malignant germ cell tumours. Uh, and we find that these microRNAs are still positive. So whereas we previously believed uh, perhaps 30 or 40% of patients overall with these tumours were marker uh, negative. Uh, we, a combination of the traditional markers of AFP and HCG, combined with these new microRNA um, tests, uh, correctly identify all patients with disease. Now to date, uh, what we have shown uh, is that uh, we've uh, studied malignant germ cell tumour cases which occur uh, outside of the brain. Uh, and we've looked at uh, cases which occur uh, in the gonads of the testes and the ovaries, and also at extragonadal sites, so that's uh, other sites in the body. Um, and up until now, what, peop uh, what hasn't been done is to look at uh, cerebrospinal fluid uh, to look to see whether uh, patients who have malignant germ cell tumours in the brain also have uh, raised levels of uh, micro these microRNAs. So microRNAs are expressed uh, right from the uh, sort of earliest uh, embryonic um, development. Uh, they, the, which microRNAs and how much and the levels that are expressed change and are very carefully regulated uh, during development uh, and during life uh, because uh, similar to n protein coding genes, these non-protein coding genes, if the levels either become low or high, can act uh, as cancer forming uh, genes. Uh, and so uh, they are very carefully controlled and the, the understanding in in, the num in cancers is that these microRNAs, in addition to other protein, traditional protein coding genes, um, become altered or uh, the levels become abnormal in some way. And that can have uh, consequences that the cell can then escape the normal mechanisms uh, of control and can form a malignant growth. Uh, so th the, as I say, these microRNAs uh, are, imp are important in development. What I would say about the microRNAs we have shown to be very high in malignant germ cell tumours is that uh, in normal uh, adult tissues, that the levels of them are either they're not either not expressed at all or they're expressed at very low levels. And therefore it makes it very, very easy for us when we're measuring levels in the tissues or measuring levels in, in body fluids to identify uh, between abnormally raised levels and the normal levels uh, we see uh, in, in normal healthy individuals. There's the two clusters of microRNAs that we see in malignant germ cell tumours are MER371-3, and that's uh, situated on chromosome 19, uh, and also MER302 cluster, which is uh, on chromosome 4. Now, although individual microRNAs from those clusters have been shown to be uh, expressed at high levels in certain cancers, 
uh, it, it, what hasn't been shown in any other cancer is the fact that both of these clusters are expressed at very high levels, and that's a unique finding uh, in malignant germ cell tumours. And one of the advantages of that is that it helps to distinguish uh, high levels of perhaps one or two of those microRNAs from those clusters from, for, as you mentioned, uh, embryonal tumours where um, uh, a small number of those microRNAs have been, uh, have been identified as being at high levels. And that's important because when you have a, a patient who presents to you with a mass and you're not sure whether it's a germ cell tumour or another embryonal type tumour, by profiling the full range of microRNAs that we see, the eight main microRNAs from those two clusters, we can be confident that what we're looking at would be a malignant germ cell tumour uh, from another type of tumour. Now, at, at present, uh, the work has been obviously laboratory-based, and what will be important over the next few years is to uh, translate those, uh, those early findings in patient samples into wider studies, confirm them in bigger cohorts of patients so that we can then establish uh, these mi microRNA testing as a sort of routine uh, test in the hospital for, for patient benefit. Pr as a practicing clinician, one of the difficulties is trying to arrange complicated um, tests for patients which involve uh, samples being on ice, uh, delivered on dry ice. One of the advantages of these microRNAs, as you say, is they're very stable. Uh, the samples can be left out uh, at room temperature uh, for, for days without affecting the, the results. So, for example, uh, a, a sample that was left overnight in a uh, hospital biochemistry a lab, the result would be the same the following day as it being processed immediately. And th the practical use of that means that, it's m that you're far more likely to be able to get the result and have a reliable result, not have to repeat it, um, and have more confidence in those findings. So um, uh, th there's numerous studies now that have shown that microRNAs um, are exceptionally stable at a variety of temperatures, and they've also um, been shown to be useful in a forensic setting uh, as well because of their stability over time and a number of months or even years sometimes. We're looking uh, to do as, a, as part of this meeting is to increase collaboration between different groups who are looking at um, these microRNAs and also to look at um, adding amendments to clinical trials that are already open uh, to specifically study these microRNAs as, as part of uh, the, wider, um, the, the wider trials that are ongoing.